In the comments section on the post, I will post a fairly high resolution copy of the basic image. You can right click and drag that onto your own desktop if you want and actually use that image to work through the tutorial. Um, let me know if this is helpful. Let me know if people want to see more of them. This has taken me about five hours to produce, so I don't want to continue to produce them if people really aren't interested in them. But uh, I find it a very intriguing process, although it is very time consuming. Wish you luck. Hi there, folks. This is a tutorial to show some of the techniques I use to produce my new poster series. This is not a plug-in or, or an app that you can buy. This is something that you have to produce using an application like Photoshop or Freehand or some other application that will allow you to select and draw shapes of the, from the image. I'll walk you through the steps that were used to produce this particular image. This is the image that we started with. In this particular case, I've picked a very geometrically formatted image so that we can use very simple selection tools to select the areas that we're going to fill with color. So the first thing you need to do is establish the biggest shapes, the biggest areas, and select them. And in this particular case, I use the uh, rectangle tool to select these areas and then fill them. Once you've got the bottom layer done, then you need to start selecting the things that are going to go on top. And this needs to go on a new layer. So in this case, I started with the keyhole here and did that one on a layer by itself so it can be manipulated without affecting the rest. Then I went in and added some of the cracks, some of the paint along the edge of the door. I probably would have put more of this in, but I just didn't want to take the time to do it. And here's the blank doorknob holder. And then I wanted to put a nice background color into the blank area of the poster. Now I, I expanded the canvas to create this. And I'll show you how I did that. And then I just filled it with a color. And this is what it looks like with just the selection work done. Then I ran it through Topaz Impression using one of the pencil sketch filters and then created this piece from that. So once you've got this done, you can then you can use it just like it is, or you can run it through whatever piece of software that you like to use to add texture and create a more interesting image. Then I added a line around the outside of the border. Now, I didn't like the way the keyhole here looked, so I actually duplicated layer two, and this is why you want to work on individual layers, and so I just brought that up in here, dropped it in, and reduced the opacity a little bit to give more definition to that particular part of it. Then I made a black and white copy of the image. And I do this so that I can use this particular black and white image to increase or decrease the contrast and detail within the final image. In this particular case, I did it and I went in and I added luminance and we can see the difference, how it really popped up the image. Then I started adding in my text, and that's all the steps that I went through to produce the poster example. Now I'm going to go back and, and cover the selection tools and the gradient fills and fill tools to show you how I use them. But I just wanted to give you an overview of the process because I'm not going to completely redo the whole image. It would take too much time. 
There are a few things you should do to set up your document before you start the process. One is you want to duplicate your bottom layer. Then you want to add a blank layer. And the reason we do this is we have to select from this layer the areas and fills. We need to put the fills on the blank layer, but we need to select from the top layer. You will inadvertently paste color into this top layer where you don't want it. That's why we duplicate it because then we can revert back to the original layer and make a new one if we mess this one up. The idea behind this is to break the image up into separate areas of color. Now you can select by borders which are created by the lines in this image or you could create by tone. I could come on over here and just try and select these tones. Um, or you can just freehand select and make the image very random. What we're going to do is we're going to use the mosaic tool to select the areas that we want to fill. Now we're going to start with the biggest areas first and we'll put them on the lowest layer and we'll add more detail and every time we add something that has more detail we'll put it on another layer. So I'm just going to click and drag across and I've now selected the area that will represent that piece of wood. I have to make sure that I have layer 2 selected. Now you can take the eyedropper tool and you can go in and try and select a color within this area to represent it. Um, so I'll click right there and that will show up down here in our selector. Then we take the paint bucket and click. Now if I shut off this top layer, we can see that we have placed color to represent that area on the blank layer. Now you, in some cases, you're going to want to add a border to that selection. So if you're going to do that, we go on up and we go down to Stroke under Edit. And again, we click on the color, and we can take our color picker and select a darker color from within the image. Say OK. Now, the bigger the selection, the thicker the line is the general rule that I use. So these are the very largest areas that we're going to select. So I'm going to start with 10 as my maximum width of line. Now we shut that off, and we can see that we now have a line around the selection. Now we're going to continue to do this. We're going to go through and do this to all of the major sizes. This is how the image should look once you've selected your areas of color. Now it looks pretty flat. What we have to do is we have to use the gradients to create the illusion of light across the surface of these these fields. So what we need to do is, if you go on over, and you see where the paint bucket is, if you click on the paint bucket, under the paint bucket, you'll find the gradient tool. Now what the gradient tool will do will allow me to fill each one of these with a variation of color. So I'm going to click back up on my top layer, and the first one I'm going to do is, is this one right here. Now if I take my color picker, and I come on over, and I'm going to pick the darkest color I see in here, I'll take that. And that color will appear down here in the swatches. Now I'm going to move the back swatch to the top and I'm going to pick the lightest color. You can now see we have uh, the two highest and lowest values. Now if I take the gradient tool, let's go back now I need to select this area if I just take the magic wand tool right here and I click in this area oops, got to be on the layer it will just select that value now I can take the gradient tool and as I pull the gradient tool across we can see how it creates 
this nice value. Now, if you change the angle, the angle of the color will change. Now, on this, the light is coming from this side, and you have to establish your direction of light to figure out which way you want to pull these gradients. So I'd say my light is actually coming from about up here. So I'm going to take and pull this across, maybe with just a slight down tilt, and that will give me my gradient. Now we can do the same thing on the next field. So I grab the, well first I have to deselect. Go to select, deselect, and then I need to click on the um, eyedropper. Go back up to this layer, and I'm going to pick my lightest value. And I'll put that on the top, then I need to move the other one to the top, and then I'm going to pick my lowest value. Go back down. Make sure this is selected. Select the area with the color, I mean with the magic wand. Go to your gradient. And now again, trying to maintain that same light direction. Deselect. Now these panels in here are supposed to be recessed. They're in behind these pieces. So what we're going to need is we're going to need to try and create the illusion of a shadow in these corners. Okay. So I'm going to go back up again. First thing I'm going to do is pick my colors. So I'm going to take the color, uh, the color picker, and I'm going to move right in here and try and find the darkest value right close to that line. And then I'm going to pick out, move that, pick out the highest value out here. Now we need to select the area. So magic wand, click here. Now when I go to the gradient tool, we can see up here at the top there's a whole series of panels and you can fill with different types of gradients. What we've been using is a linear gradient but there's also a radial gradient which comes out from the center of a circle. Now what we want to do is we want to create the illusion of a shadow coming around this line. We can't do that with a gradient. We have to use a radial. So I'm going to click here, come down in, drag it and see what I get. Okay, it's going the wrong way. The shadow's out here. I want the shadow down in there. Now we can see we're starting to get a little shadow in there. Now, you can see I can come outside and it'll only fill into the area that's selected. And you guys sort of play with ah, there it is. See now it looks like there's a little shadow right in there. So I'm going to go to select, deselect, magic wand, go to the other side, grab the gradient tool. There we go. So that creates the illusion that light is coming across this surface. So we're going to deselect. Come back up. We'll look at this over here. Again, get the eyedropper. Pick my darkest value. Pick my brightest value. Take the magic wand tool. Whoops, wrong one. I gotta go back up to the linear. Just click on that. And 
now it creates the effect that the light is coming across. Deselect. And we now have a much more visually interesting surfaces by adding the gradients to create the illusion of light. Now I have one other little problem on this. If I look at this right here, I can see that that doesn't quite line up. When you get to do any fine adjustments, you want to move in as close as you can. It makes it much easier. Now if I take the magic wand, click on this, oops, didn't select the whole thing because of the gradient. There we go. Now if I click on the move tool, the handles will reappear. So now I can just take that and drag it down to have it fit that area better. Say deselect. Oops, I have to click the check mark because I did a change. Okay, deselect. And that looks okay. Double click the magnifier to get back out to full size. Whoops, sorry, maybe it's the hand. It's the hand. So we now have the bottom layer done. Now we're going to start adding these things in and we're going to put each one of these on a separate layer so that we can actually move them around on the door or we can manipulate them in other ways further on during the process. Now we're going to move on to the next layer and you have to realize that what you're going to do is you're going to be building up layers of detail. We started with the biggest now we're going to move down to the next size layers which will be these two. They're the next largest objects within the scene. Now we have to use different selection tools for these because they aren't square shapes. So I'm going to start down here with the keyhole. So again you want to move in so that you can really see what you're doing. You'll have more control and you'll be able to create something with more detail the closer you get. So what we're going to use on this one is we're going to use the we're going to be using the polygon tool to select this particular shape. Now with the polygon tool when you click it creates points that the lines connect to. When you're doing a curve you have to make more selections to, to make it look like a curve. But when you have a straight area, you can just go to the other end and click. So on the curves, I make little selections. On the straight lines, I make big selections. Let's click here. Small selections, click. Now when you come back to the end, you'll see a little O appear. You see that O right there beside the tool? That means that we have a closed point. And if we click on that, it becomes a closed shape with a selection. So now what we need to do is fill the selection. We have a new layer. We're going to come on up, get our eyedropper tool. And we're going to do the gradients as we do the fills this time. So I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to pick oh, dark color. You can see it appears down here. Move it up. Pick the dark color. Grab your gradient. Make sure you're on the new layer. Do a pull. Shut it off so you can see what you're doing. And again, we have to be conscious of our direction of the light. Remember, it's coming from up in here. So there we go. We now have the gradient fill. Now we want a line around this so it will stand out away from the door. So we're going to go back up, go to Edit, go to Stroke. And because this is a smaller object, we want to light a line. So I'm going to take this down to 5. And we can just pick a dark color. We don't have to select it from the uh, image. 
Okay, you leave centered alone, everything else is fine. We say okay. Now we have the line around that. Now I'm going to deselect. Click back up on this, and now I'm going to select the interior space here. So I take again the polygon tool. And if we're in close, we can make these nice little selections. But you couldn't make this tight. Whoops. That will happen occasionally. It just, for some strange reason, it will either disappear or it will collect on you. All you have to do is to go back up, do deselect, start over again. Now I'm using a tablet to do this, which makes it much easier. But you can do it with a mouse if you're comfortable with the mouse. I think the problem is that I'm holding the uh, pen too close to the tablet after I make the selection, and so it's deleting it. So I'll try pulling the pen away faster, and we'll see if that works. There. Now, right, it seemed to have stayed that time. We're going to shut off this layer and now we want it to fill with the background from the door so we're going to take our color picker we have now selected that color and we're just going to, we're not going to use a gradient we're going to go with a straight fill so we just use the bucket there it is and again we want to throw a line on there stroke go back up to the original now we have the screw holes and the screws it would be very difficult to make that selection with a polygon but under the shape thing here we do have an ellipse now if you bring the ellipse down and you'll try and line it right up in the center if you hold down the shift key and the option key it will draw from the center take your fingers off okay pick a color hopefully something that will help it separate out from the other ones a little bit make sure you're on the right layer fill it oops I guess I didn't pick the color there we got it at that time There it is. Now we need to make the slot for the screw. And this is where I say moving in. You can get just as close as you can. Okay, so now I'm going to hit deselect. Take the rectangle tool again. Click here. Oop. Click and drag. Oh, we can't use that one because it's too hard to rotate. So we'll do deselect again and we'll go back to our polygon. Click, 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 click. Oh, we lost it again. I didn't pull away fast enough. So now we select the color. And fill with the bucket. Now we have our screw. Now we need to do the one on the other end. Again, going up to the ellipse tool. Place it in the center. Shift, Option, drag. Oops, I didn't do it in time. Shift, option, before you drag. There you go. 
and again I want the background color of the door grab a color picker pick that go back up to this grab the bucket do the fill wasn't on the right layer to the fill okay now let's double click the hand and or the magnifier so we can get back out to deselect and we can see how good that looks because we can move in very very close and do the work now because this is on a separate layer you can actually pick it up and move it any place you want it on the door and this is why we put things on separate layers it gives us much more flexibility on how we can manipulate the image in the end this tutorial is taking a lot longer than I thought it would so I'm gonna I'm gonna break this section at this point this gives you more than enough to work with in the comment section on the post I will post a fairly high resolution copy of the basic image you can right click and drag that onto your own desktop if you want and actually use that image to work through the tutorial um, let me know if this is helpful let me know if people want to see more of them this has taken me about five hours to produce so I don't want to continue to produce them if people really aren't interested in them but uh, I find it a very intriguing process, although it is very time-consuming. Wish you luck.